I'm an outsider that came in. He graduated from Oklahoma City the year before we did and came and I met him when he was from Chesapeake College. And then he was, his uncle was like, oh, that's right. That's right. I remember him was from the home. East, yeah. I said, Mr. Hickey, this way. Were you ready? This is my husband. Is this your husband? This is to trace across the town to see each other. Are you sure that we got to and this, this is Jean Woods that her husband left him was. It's taken. Very good. This is my husband. This is Keith. <laughs> No, uh, we live in Crowley, which is just oh, yeah. south of Fort Worth. Oh, of course, you've got to come in to see me sometime then. I live in Fort Worth. Well, in you where? Fort Worth. Do you live in Fort Worth? Well, we kind of kind of kept up with your family a little bit along through the newspaper. And you need to come and hear her sing. Well, when, when she comes back, well, we'll, July the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Well, we'll be in North Carolina then. Our youngest daughter's husband lives in North Carolina, and we're going down there with him for the holiday. That's great. Now, I've got to take care of it. That's okay. You missed it. But I play basketball out there quite a while. What did you think? We don't doubt. I can't, oh, I can't see very far ahead. <laughs> She's married to Lewis Thompson. Lewis okay. King. I'm going to copy you. I'm going to die. And you are. I'm Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look and, uh, you know, everyone. I know it. Look and see who you are. <laughs> and who is this? This is Joyce Powell. Joyce Powell. Sherwood. Oh, is she here? Uh, yep. She's well, all good. She's going to be <laughs> set. <laughs> Well, she said she was getting it. Oh, they found your name out there. Colleen. Not Colleen. How did you do that? He was helping our uh, grandchildren. Did they do good stuff here? Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Uh, we did go to the bedside. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. I did it wrong.
Are you Alva? Fine, yeah, you do. Just say. But I, most of the girls give me a hug. Well, I don't know if I'm going to hate you, but I'll pass. This new member hates it. Well, I mean, I tell you, you really forget people, don't you? I don't. Well, you don't, you know. You don't use the name, you don't say it. I haven't, I haven't been to one of these years. Well, this is the first one. Did you get her? Yeah, I'll be back. Well, you know, you can have the name on there. That's Dean Miller and one L. Well, she doesn't remember me. <laughs> She's good for stuff. She just got out of the hospital. Get your picture, Norma. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I didn't think that. I know. Yeah. 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 Lois. He, he doesn't know who I am. Lois Kenman. Lois Kenman. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> Everybody's supposed to be on this tape when I get through. <laughs> Donnie, you know that's Lester Christensen there? Where? That man talking to Nita.
Okay, she already got it. Alright, let's go. place in line. You can get the top of my head. Yeah. My wig didn't blow off. <laughs> blew off out in front of That's a main project. It's fun talking and remembering, but if you can't eat, it's not good. <laughs> sure, eat light. Great day. He's not really eating light. He has some more coming. Oh, Go. He's, he's always out of the picture. We'll save, we'll save two inches of space for him. Good Mexican food. There's it. You think I was coming back, but I did. I saved some space for you, though. Got, got to get everybody. Got you coming along.
taking pictures. When it says E R E C, what does that mean? That means R E C means you're recording, and E means the battery's nearly out. Well, you'll have to use it. There's Keith. We're out at Joyce Sherwood's home, Ken's. And there's Lois Kenman used to be. <laughs> and there's La uh, Bob, <laughs> her husband. And let's see. There's. Okay. I can't see. <laughs> she told us not. <laughs> yeah, Marie. Norma. Alva. Leslie. Christensen. Mary Alice Kane. Nan. Mary Alfred. And in a minute, they'll all be back. <laughs> Keith says I wiggled so much it looks like a drunk person. <laughs> ready. I'm ready. Well, now we're at the home of Joyce and Kenneth Sherwood. We're just some of us have gathered over here for a gathering. Now Keats is going to go around and take everybody's pictures. Okay, you tell them what I'm going to do. He's going to enter. You tell the people what they're going to do. Lois, I need you to tell me your name while I'm taking your picture. And where you live. Okay. I'm Lois Smith Rowling, and I live out at Luther, about 50 miles from the That's where I grew up. Married good back there. <laughs> Man? I'm Nan Carpenter Case, and I live in the Pacus, about 22 miles south of Pacus, toward the Davis Mountains. Catherine? Christine. Christine. <laughs> I'm Christine Anderson Smith, Norman Smith's wife. Very good. Thank you. Alfred, who are you? I'm Alfred Kate, and I live with my wife, Nan, over at Girl Haven. That's the best place to live, isn't it? With your wife. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Norvin, I need you to tell me your name and where you live so Donnie will know you next time. I am Norvin Smith. I'm from Lubbock, Texas. Been living there 40 years. Alva? Yeah. Where do you live? Well, I live out in California. And I'm still Texan. You want your house in California for the last 27 years. Yes, you Thank you. In Rolling Heights. Rolling Heights. Very good. We got to. Uh, Hello. Your turn now. My turn. What do we say? You're, you're going to tell me your name and where you live. I'm Sybil Lang. I was Sybil Oliver. And I live in Carmel, California. That's Central California. Beautiful spot. Come see us. Very good. I'm Marguerite Twinney. I was Sweetie Hair. I live in Huntsville, Alabama. Norma. Very good. Thank you. Jail Christensen. 764 with El Paso. 79912. 581-6209. Very good. Thank you. I need your name so that one of the ladies. 
Merry Christmas. Very good. Classic 41. Very good. Not everyone, but many guys. You're next. Elena Hams Bright. Class of 42. And where do you live? Bigsbury. Still live in Bigsbury. Bigsbury. Very good. Thank you. Uh, this this is this is the host. This is Mr. Sherwood. Uh, what is your first name? Kenneth. Kenneth. Okay. Everybody calls me Ken. Yeah, short. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Let's see. You step out. No, no. The light is killing it. Oh, Come. I see. Now, right okay. there. There we go. Okay. Okay. What is your name? Uh, Cromwell Roten. And you live where? At Luther. Still live at Luther? Yes, I am. Very good. <laughs> Token those tanks. You don't have to give us your name. Okay, we need your name and who you're married to and where you live and all that good stuff. Very good. Joyce? Turn around. Turn around so I get a good picture for Toka. You gotta get to see Toka. No. You're gonna send it to her. Tink's gonna send it to her. Oh, that's great. That's great. Very I've, good. I've got a letter I need to read. It. Okay. I'm John Hughes. I'm an optician and I live uh, about as far north of Big Springs as uh, they do out here. I've been, uh, been an optician in Big Springs for. Uh, uh, 40 years before I retired. My home is, uh, was in Merkle, Texas before, uh, before Marie married. All right, Marie. What do you want to know about me? Your, we, I don't know if you and Toka were very close. What was your maiden name? My name was uh, Marie Kilgore. And I remember Toka. I don't know that we were real close. Because I always lived out west of town, you know. I didn't get to run around with those city kids all the time. There you go. Thank you. But are you going to send this tape to her? I'm going to give it to uh, Tink, and Tink's going to copy it and send it out to Toka. Okay. Well, hello, Toka. Benita <laughs> Kate Squires. Uh, I live in Broadus, Texas, which has a big population of 150. It triples or quadruples every time somebody wants to go fishing. Good fishing down there, then. Very good. I don't get to go off the golden law that climbs up on the car and call everybody. <laughs> I can't get you anybody to be in that car. Yeah, just as she went up. Tell Toka hello. Still talking. Listen to her. Now. Hello, Toka. Wish you were here. We're having a great time. Very good. With us. Does, does she know you? No. Okay. Tell her who you are. What's your connection? Lois Looney's husband. <laughs> Lois Kinman's husband. Kinman, yeah. Now, now she knows. Now she knows. Belong to this one over here. And y'all live where? Live in Granbury, Texas. Very good. I'm Doris Kelly. I belong to Raleigh Kelly. That's the first time she's ever said she belonged to anybody. You, you live where, Raleigh? Well, Andrew is about 65 miles west of Big Spring. Very good. So it's, it's a real pleasure. Boy, we were having a good time. Wish everybody was here. That's that's everyone that's here, Toka. We're uh, having a good time, and we're missing you. Let me get down out of the light. Okay, Bob. Toka, it's a real unusual name. I have a sister named Toka. And where where does she live? She lives in Dublin, Texas. Well, that's not so far. <laughs> so you get to visit pretty much. Yeah, see her every once in a while. Very good. That better than Toka The only other one I ever knew was the one that she was named after. A teacher that taught school in a little community of Wilson, Texas. And uh, 
my mother thought it was an unusual name, and here comes <laughs> her, and she got to be Toka. Can't see the reading from here, but that's the door, Roberts. Student Union Building, where all the places is taking place. All the good things happen. <laughs> oh, I get up. Thanks and be glorious as a beautiful camera you have. <laughs> <laughs> it does the duty. Beard is made. Yeah, can you go the beard? I see something. Well, I didn't recognize him until I saw him straight in the face and I knew him. Well, see, when I came to Ireland, I didn't have him. That's Jack. Jack Graves and Wilbur and Sam. Hi, how are you? Very good, Jack. I gotta call these names because I forget them when I get them. Oh, my you, Lord. You, you don't get them on. I know who's Dad. Yeah. I don't know who those guys are. I can't see that far. Oh. I can't. You can't see that far? No. Stretch them out. Carolyn Carol. Yeah. That's horses. That's horses. What? I told somebody, I said, I'm going to make all these darn reunion men. Have we met you? I'm Grover Cunningham. Grover. I'm on the Don. I'm Keith Watt. How are you? We're with someone else. And now I've got you by yourself. Very good. Thank you. I have to go get you. I'm Keats Watts. I'm one of Don's husband. That, that way, when you get in notoriety, I can say, hey, I knew them when. We haven't got it yet. <laughs> Thank you, Bernard. This is Nanny Jo. Used to be Alan. This is Carla. You knew her husband. Elwood. That's Matt Elwood. We knew Elwood. I worked with Elwood. Oh, you did? Yeah. I think he's got a lot of 
Emily Gaskins talked to Barbara Weir, Dalton Carr's wife. Okay, there goes Janice Gates and her husband, Jimmy Moore. She's got the shorts on. Stop here and let him see Robbie. This is Robbie Pine Hildor. And this is my husband, Keith. That's Peppy Blunt, whether you remember him or not. Everybody knows him by reputation. He's still just as loud as he was when he was in school. This is Agnes Curry. <laughs> this is Laverne Wilson. Hello, Laverne. Dick Clifton, I've lived in Reno the past 20 years, but I'm now living back in Pittsburgh. And Dick Clifton is fat now, too. <laughs> you know it. I didn't say that, Dick. I did not say that. Jack. Jack Crenshaw is living happily. Jack Crenshaw is happily. Tell them who you are. Louder. 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 Billy Bob Mim. Okay. Well, Mim Nation. Jack Burrow, Texas. Jack Burrow. Go ahead, Billy. It's been a year. That's Billy Yates. <laughs> Billy Yater. Thank you. 
matriculated at Texas A&M University. That's what secretly I always wanted to go to A&M, but my IQ was too high. <laughs>
Mardina Hill Garrett from La Mesa, and this one is from Berlin, and he's a native of La Mesa. And I'm going to call that way. You know you can see La Mesa on a clear day from Top City Drive. <laughs> <laughs> you really can. You really can. You want to check it out? <laughs> Jack Gage.
Sam's always been very bridged. He found a little can of things when we lived out there on East. And what it ended up being was just the equivalent of a, of a hand grenade. And they said at the time that it blew him over the over the hill. I mean, over the house. And and uh, John H was was uh, just got this thing. But I thought I'd put that on John H when I hit him with a piece of slate. Hit him later, but he got a black right across there. That thing. Well, anyway, he says that he's never going to take a hammer to.
Smith or Edwin Harris has done in the last 30 years. <laughs> like they're doing a good quick practice. Right there. Oh, yeah. 
I thought you'd want one. Yeah. Piano. <laughs> Got you. Okay, this this is Gloria and Jean. Gloria and all and Jean Fletcher. And uh, we got them together this time. Okay. <laughs> appreciate Vernon Joe and Louis <coughs> brothers very much and all their help in Belina, Dot Hall and Betty Bob Buckley, Lois Roten and Gloria Fletcher. I really, really appreciate that because uh, uh, we did the best we could on the memory books. We made some mistakes, but uh, we also didn't realize that uh, Dave was going to have to undergo this uh, treatment for prostate cancer, so that kind of... Uh, deterred things a little bit, but he persevered and he we got as much done as we could. Some of the late letters that got after the deadline didn't get, uh, you know, in the books, as you see, but you'll be able to alphabetize those and put them in. He put the holes in. How many holes did you punch, David? 30,500. <laughs> <laughs> he had <a> count. <laughs> he worked. Every time I came home from anywhere, this he was in there punching good. holes or making copies. And also, thank you so much for putting this reunion at the last part of June. I'm sorry, Peppy, and I apologize that you had to miss your 45th anniversary with your wife because of this. Anything. But I was supposed to go to a family reunion on the 4th of July, so I asked Belina and the committee if they would please put this at the end of June so I could make the 4th of July reunion in Hillsboro on the 4th of July. But and we're anyway. all going with you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, but we're not going to make it. So you all go and give him our regards. <laughs> we can't make it. He has to go back for more treatments. So um, anyway, that's that part. Now, if I may share just a few more words, and I was given permission, so it's not going to be too long. But <laughs> you guys all knew me in high school, and I sang, and I played the piano, but I didn't know too much about life, and Dave will attest to that even when I met him. I still didn't know too much. However, uh, we were members of the First Baptist Church, and uh, uh, my brother and I were baptized there and went to Sunday school and BYPU, that's Baptist Young People's Union for all you you know, everybody was a Baptist until somebody started fooling around with them. <laughs> but we remained Baptist for a long time, and Dave was brought up Baptist. But we have joined the Presbyterian Church now, but that's irrelevant. Uh, through high school and college, uh, and even after I went to New York, I thought I was a Christian. I did all the things that I thought uh, would get me to heaven, 
you know, I, I lived by the Golden Rule and kept the Ten Commandments and sang in church and gave money and so forth. And our children were in uh, Sunday school at the uh, Rockwell Center Methodist Church in Rockwell Center, Long Island. So I thought everything was fine. But it wasn't until we went down to Fort Lauderdale and we joined the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church that I found out what being a Christian really means. Someone asked me the question, if I were to die tonight, was I sure that I would go to heaven? And I didn't know. And they then asked me a second question, if you were to die tonight and stand before God and he were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? I didn't know the answer. Now I know that the Bible tells us that we can know for sure we are going to heaven. It's in 1 John 5, 13. And uh, by believing in Jesus Christ and accepting him as our Lord and Savior of our lives, repenting of our sins, and trusting in him alone for our salvation, that's the way to heaven. He loves us so much that if we had been the only human beings on the earth, he would have still died for us. And since accepting Jesus as my Savior, I have a peace and a purpose and a sense of God's love. I still have problems. Nobody said you're not going to have problems after you become a Christian, but Jesus helps you solve them. There's an answer with Jesus Christ. I hope that if any of you don't know for sure that you have eternal life, you will pray and invite Jesus Christ into your lives and into your hearts. It's the most important decision you can ever make in this life. Thank you. Are we going to have the school song, Peppy? He said he was going to have it at the first and in the middle and at the last. <laughs> All righty. Um, it's been a long time since I've been a professional singer, so I hope you all make allowances for a few little things that don't sound quite right. But anyway, <coughs> this is a song that the McGuire sisters made famous about 1960, and it's called Just for Old Time's Sake. Thank you. 
Okay, the second song is from a, so a show uh, that was on Broadway for quite a few years and in London. Maybe it started in London, I don't know. Anyway, Dave and I were fortunate enough to see it in London. It's called Cats. And the song, I think the only good song from the show, really, it was a good show, but I think this is the only song that people could go out humming. And it's called Memory. So I thought uh, I'll give this one a whirl. <coughs> Yeah. 
Thank you, Karki and David. Appreciate you so very much. I have a few basic beliefs. I believe that every banquet should end the same day that it starts. <laughs> few short announcements. We don't have much heavy industry in Longview now these days. But we, the thing we got is a 300-pound Avon lady moved to town lady. <laughs> So we're coming up in the world, I want you to know. <laughs> I got it on it right there. You know, we're, we're, I'd like to say something gracious and warm right now. Good gracious, it's warm. In here. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to show of hands. Oh, how many have heard me before? <laughs> How many have never heard me before? How many don't give a darn? <laughs> Is there another one? <laughs> you got it, I'd like to have it. <laughs> oh boy. I'll tell you. I'm, I'm like a mosquito in a nudist colony. I've got so much material here. I just... <laughs> you know, I think, I think these stories about the little people are, 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 are so interesting and entertaining. And I think about the little fellow back home that was just four years old and been playing all, all summer long with his couple of year older friends. And so when September came along, they went off to the first grade and he was left at home. And he stood it for about a couple of days. And then, boy, he just got himself ready, and he hiked himself up to the elementary school, and he walked in in the principal's office, and he said, I want to go to school. And the principal said, well, that's fine, young man. said, that's what we're here for, is to put young people in school. He said, you just don't start just that way. He said, how old are you? He said, I'm four years old, and I want to start to school. He said, you can't do anything at four years old. He said, yes, I can, and I want to go to school. He said, well, certain things have to happen. You just don't walk into the schoolroom. He said, I said, he said, well, what? He said, well, first of all, you got to have your shot record. The little fella pulled his shot record out of one pocket. There it was. He said, well, that's good. He said, but you've got to have parental permission. Stuck his hand in the other pocket and came out. Parents' permission. He said, young man, I said, I don't want to take you down to the first grade teacher. Let her give you a quiz. We'll just see whether you're up here. He said, that's fine. They went down. Cute young thing, about 23 years old, uh, t teaching the first grade. And she said, all right, young man. He said, what's uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2? He said, 8. said, uh, what does a cow have four of that I just have two of? <laughs> said legs. <laughs> said, what, what do you have two of in your pants that I don't have any of in mine? He said pockets. <laughs> the principal said, stop it right there. He said, I missed the last two myself. <laughs> Put <it in> <laughs> Getting ready to take a trip on the train, she told her little talkative five-year-old son, said, now when the conductor asks you how old you are, you say, I'm four years old. And the child said, but mother, I'm not four years old. I'm five years old. And the mother said, no, you tell that conductor that you're four years old. You understand that? He finally said, well, okay. They got on the train. The conductor came down and came to the little boy and he said, how old are you, sonny? He said, I'm four years old. He said, will you be five? He says, just as soon as I get off this damn train. <laughs> Then there was this little boy, just after a thunderstorm, he was sitting there in the ditch, and you know, he was playing, uh, right after a thunder shower, and he was playing in the mud, and he was mixing mud and manure, and, and an insurance man came along, and he said, what are you making there, young man? And he said, I'm making an insurance man. <laughs> a lawyer standing nearby, smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, a lawyer standing, he said, overheard the conversation, he said, uh, now you're going to make a lawyer? And the little boy replied, haven't got enough manure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I spoke down at Del Rio several years ago, and if y'all don't remember anything about pro ball, they had the Blank Brothers went to school down there. They're colored boys. And we, no, we don't say. We say blacks. That's right. And and um, uh, they played defensive back for the Houston Oilers, and they told me about the discrimination situation where the, the room was all Mexicans and just two little black boys, and that the teacher totally ignored these little black boys all the time. So one day she had the history lesson going. She said, 
who said, I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. And a little black boy held up his hand. The teacher totally ignored him, looked over there to the right to Juanita Garcia and said, all right, Juanita. He said, Nathan Hale. She said, very good. She then said, all right, class. Said, um, who said uh, the only fear that we have to fear is fear itself? And one of the little black boys again raised his hand, totally ignored and went to Pedro Gonzalez. He said, Franklin Roosevelt. Said, very good, Pedro. That's fine. Said, all right. Who said, don't ask what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country? Little black, both little black boys raised their hand again, totally ignored, and went to Henry Martinez over there. He said, John Kennedy. He said, very good. About that time, the, t the bell rang. Everyone started getting up, and the little black boy said, well, didn't say that anyway, just <laughs> going to give it away before I get there. <laughs> and everyone started to get it up, and one of the little black boys said, to us, no, he didn't. <laughs> he said, where did all these Mexicans come from? The teacher turned around and said, who said that? He said, Davy Crockett. <laughs> this family, nine kids, every one of them were boys. And lo and behold, another one was on the way. And this time, the, the mother and father felt so sure, so absolutely certain that this one was going to be a girl that they went ahead and picked out the name of Damsel. But sure enough, it was another boy. And so they just named him Dammy. Well, he was a very precocious child, smart in school, make the honor roll. And so while he's in the middle of the first grade, well, the superintendent was coming by, so the teacher wanted to impress the superintendent. What a good job that she was doing. So she set up a little spelling bee, and so the teacher and the superintendent could observe the progress that they were making. And the children were asked to spell, you know, dog and cat. As they came down the line, it came to little damn it, and, and he said, I want to spell chrysanthemum. And the teacher said, damn it, you can't spell chrysanthemum. <laughs> and the superintendent said, well, hell, give him a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, this, I didn't know they were doing this anymore, but, but one, one of the lovely female members of our class approached me and said, Peppy said, my husband never buys me a dress, and said, I've got a dress out on approval from Sackowitz, and said, uh, I think maybe if you'd recognize me tonight and, and give me a little attention that, that maybe my husband might be persuaded to, to, to purchase this, this new dress for I said, well, I'll just be delighted. So if Bernard Joe Carruthers is standing <laughs> This morning, you know, when they, when uh, Louis Jean was telling about, you know, running into him over there at, at Lady, and of course, old Horace, the story was that just really, really, just homesick. He got over there in the Philippines, and he wrote his mama a homesick letter. He said, Mother said, I miss your cooking. I, I miss that ham, and I miss that ham gravy, and I miss those big fluffy biscuits, and I miss your apple pie, Mother, and said, Mama, I even miss that little pot that you used to put under my bed every night. <laughs> well, Miss Bostick wrote back to him in the regular course of business. said, Horace, said, honey, I know that you miss my ham and my ham gravy, and I know you miss my big fluffy biscuits, and I know you miss my apple pie, but honey, you always did miss that little pot. <laughs> want to recognize Mr. and Mrs. David Barlow tonight who are here celebrating the 20th payment on their refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so very much. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's good to, to kind of rub shoulders and come back after all these years and see who's doing so well and so fine and everything. And and Bruce Robertson, you know, and, and, and Shirley June, that old Bruce is doing all right because he's giving Shirley a mink outfit for Christmas. <laughs> That's a trap and a racket. <laughs> but, you know, she gave him a waterbed last summer. He gave her. <laughs> she gave him a waterbed last summer, and she calls it the Dead Sea. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, I, I had a few stories tonight that I wanted to tell, but uh, that would really make your hair come out. And I see most of the audience has already heard. <laughs> And you know, it, it was so good to see Ginger, you know, Virginia Taylor. And and when they first got together, what was it? Was it yesterday now? Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, before I got here, but I, I you know, just told me about it. I mean, but you know, Virginia walked up to Wilbert Moore, and she saw him, and and uh, she called him by name, said, "Wilbert, how are you?" And he said, "You'll have to excuse me, but I don't think I recognize you." And then Virginia rec. Uh, identified herself, you know, and he said, well, you've put on so much weight and your hair is so great that I didn't recognize you. And she replied, I think that's the most tactless thing anyone ever said to me. And he said, well, I didn't think a woman of your age would mind anything. <laughs> Slaughter and Dean Miller and Grover Cunningham asked me to mention their names and say something good about them yeah. if, if, if I could tonight. Well, I don't mind doing that, not at all. Jess Slaughter, you know, this is the atomic age, the hydrogen age, but Jess is living in the metallic age. That is, he has silver in his hair, gold in his teeth, and lead in his pants. <laughs> and, of course, Dean's dad was an electrician, and Dean was his first shock. You know? <laughs> and, of course, Grover covers more ground <coughs> sitting down than Bob Lilly used to in the middle of that good old cowboy's life. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's so nice to, to see so many of these people come back and married so far above themselves, you know. <laughs> Edwin Harris is really a case in point, you know. And, and uh, Ed always said that he was a self-made man. That's a horrible example of unskilled labor. <laughs> But, but his wife said that she married him for his brains. It's just the little things in life. <laughs> oh, yeah, these were the songs that we were talking about. You know, I, we've already discussed at breakfast this morning that, that old standby. She was only a jockey's daughter, but all the horsemen knew her. <laughs> well, there's the other one. She was only a moonshiner's daughter, but I loved her still. <laughs> And then there, there was the one, one, let's see, my girl lives across the border and last night she came across. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then there's those early medical folk tunes, you know. My heart sings, but my liver makes no noise. Uh, ending with an outdoor lively number, Antlers in the Pines by Who Goose to Move. <laughs> Uh, I was really impressed with Lewis Jean Thompson this morning, and I couldn't help but think back to the days many, many years ago when he was much younger, when he won the fly attracting contest at the Howard County Fair, and he wasn't even entered. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think Lewis Jean would really make a great politician because when his mind is completely made up, he's full of indecision. <laughs> And I won't say that he was retarded, but he was down at AM for four years before he found out that maneuver isn't something you spread on the grass to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, got him this morning. <laughs> and I'm glad to know that the Aggies are still on the honor system down there. The props have the honor and the students have the system. <laughs> but I remember when, when Lewis Jean was, was back in calculus and he was asking calculus on a quiz, said 2x times square root of 4 multiplied by the cosine of 3, and said, find x. He drew an arrow to the x and said, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, after his seventh year in school, he is voted the man most likely to remain. <laughs> but he says, I do exactly what I please. I've done so all my life. But what I please, of course, agrees with what will please my wife. <laughs> so he says that he always gets the last word in. He always says, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Which reminded me of, of that young man down there at A&M that was the legacy. His father had been an Aggie. His father's father had been an Aggie. His father's father's father had been an Aggie before him. He had been there for nine years, and he had this one course that he just couldn't pass. And really, this was very serious because this was a very influential family. And so the family went to the Board of Regents. The Board of Regents went to the President. Of course, Mr. Mobley said, this young man of ours has got, 
has just got to get his degree from a &M. So he called the prophet and said, you're going to have to figure out some kind of quiz for him so that you can get him graduated, so we can get him out of here. He said, all right. He said, just send him to my office. and said, I'll have a talk with you. So send him in. He said, now listen, young man. He said, I know you've been trying for four years to pass this course. and said, I'm going to make it as easy as I can for you. It said, I'm going to give you four questions. Now, these are the four questions, and you can take as long as you want to, three days, three months, a year, six months, but I want you to go back to the library and, and get at the books and really come out and then come back here and I'll give you the quiz. And he said, and the questions are, is how many days in the week start with T? And what are they? You got that? He said, yes, sure have. He said, now, the second one is once you'll have to get a computer to kind of work with, but you can work it out if you really apply yourself. And that's how many seconds are in a year? He said, you got that? He said, sure do. So, all right. The next one is religious. He said, I don't want you to give us the name of the Son of God. The name of the Son of God. Can you do that? He said, yes, yes, I sure can. And he said, now the fourth one is, how many D's are there in Dixie? He said, now you got all that? Yes, sir, yes, sir. He said, all right, get to the library and come back when you're ready. Man, a young man came back in three days' time. Here he said, I'm ready. He said, all right, well, sit down right there. He said, first question, how many days start with a T in, in, in a week, and what are they? He said, today and tomorrow. <laughs> said, today and tomorrow? Yeah. He said, well, that's not exactly what I, what I figured, but I'll, I'll accept it anyway. I can understand it. He said, how many seconds are there in a year? He said, 12. He said, 12? He said, January the 2nd, February the 2nd. He said, all right, all right. He said, all right, what, what, what's, what's the name of our Lord? What's the name, what's the name of the Son of God? And he said, Andy. He said, Andy? He said, yes, sir. He said, well, can you explain that? He said, Andy walks with me. Andy walks with me. Andy. Tell, okay, all right, okay. That's exactly what I want, but that's all right. He said, all right, how many D's are there in Dixie? He said, 267. 267? He said, yes, sir. He said, well, all right, Prop said, now get ready and start counting. Now, here we go. Just after we got started, man, go. And if you're here, would you please answer here? Billy Mims, is Billy Mims here? Here. Okay. Uh, Billy Suggs, are you here? Here. Bill? Okay. Duck Webb? Yeah, I know Duck's here. Duck's here. Bob Looney, are you here? Okay. I'm responsible to the sheriff and the probation parent of Howard County. They asked me to tell y'all to be sure to be in by 12 o'clock. <laughs> You know, it was really good to see old Hayes Tripling here. Hayes, we still want to, who was the salutatorium in this class? Now, you were the valedictorian, but who was the salutatorian? We were trying to figure that out. Who? Grover. Grover, who? Grover. Grover was valedictorian. He was valedictorian. Grover was valedictorian, all right. But but who was the salutatorian? Who? Mardina. Mardina. Oh, I am impressed. <laughs> I, I never dreamed. I've always thought it was Horace Bostick. <laughs> he, he always told me that he was. <laughs> He's been known to lie a little bit, though. You know, he really is. All right, well, I'm glad to know that. But anyway, Hayes Stripling attended Texas a he was He was a cheerleader down there. And, and like I've already... Is that right, Hayes? Was, that, was, it, was it Yale leader? No? Okay. <laughs> I, want, I want you to know, I'll tell you after all these years, it's awful tough to be out there on the field and see my dear friend stand over and like leading the cheers against your bosom buddy. I, I, I never, I've never told you that until this time, but I didn't appreciate that at all. <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. Well, you know, they had a big fire down there at AM and it burned down the library. Burned both books. <laughs> One of them hadn't even been colored in yet. <laughs> And I want you to know another thing. They have done away with driver's education down at A&M. The mule died. <laughs> but but they, have, they have a new mascot down there now, you know. It's a zebra. They, they call him Spot. <laughs> that, that's 
all I'm going to tell you about that. <laughs> I refuse to divulge another thing about that. <laughs> all right. Dalton Carr. Uh, that, that's this fellow with a fine head of skin right back here. <laughs> I want you to be sure to get a copy of his new book. He said, I Conquered Dandruff. <laughs> now, old Dalton, old Dalton and his wife have had a few arguments during their marriage, but they've never had any hair pulled. <laughs> and he's the only man that I know of that get, that prays and <laughs> gives thanks for his eyebrows. <laughs> Now, Duck Webb said, Pep said, are you going to tell them about the, the new high reductible compound comprehensive hoochie toochie toys? And I said, everybody's already heard that. Darryl, he said, yeah, but I don't want to hear it again. So. <laughs> such a unanimous request. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Ladies of 200 pounds or more, are you fat? Do you droop when you stoop? Are you tired after running up 15 flights of stairs? You find that it gets dark when you turn the lights out? Do you lose your appetite after eating? Tell me, girls, are you fighting the battle with the bulge? And you men without any hair, are you bald? You have trouble with your head sliding off the pill at night. <laughs> you go in and sit down in a bowling alley. Do people bother you by coming up and sticking their fingers in your ear? <laughs> Tell me, friends, are you bothered with meningitis, flebitis, arthritis, or hydrogenitis? Are you bothered with sunburn, sideburn, saddle burn, or dead burn? <laughs> Tell me, friends. <laughs> well, if so, what you need is a shower with a new highly reductible compound comprehensive hoochie toochie toilet soap. <laughs> now, the new highly reductible compound comprehensive hoochie toochie toilet soap is guaranteed to remove paint, pitch tar, whiskey from the abdomen, and dandruff from the hair. It's good for falling arches, flat feet, lumbago, arthritis, measles, mump, smallpox, chicken pox, removes warts and corns, and when not being used as a laxative, it's good to sign your silverware with. <laughs> now, did you know, friends, the new highly reductible compound, comprehensive hoochie toochie toilet soap? One side there, son, you bother me. <laughs> it's on sale in all nationally advertised toilets, goods, and hardware counters, not for $1.75. Son, you lost your mother up here tonight. 50 cents, 25 cents, or even 15 cents, friend, but on sale at the unheard of price of one dime, one tenth of a dollar. So, at your next opportunity, feel free to step right up and ask for a bar of the new Hoochie Toochie Toilet Soap for if you would like to be notified your popularity. Here's a breathtaking way we all agree. Get some Hoochie Toochie today. It will take the O away. You will be popular. You will see. <laughs> My joke about Hoochie Toochie Tolly. <laughs> all over the nation for extension fumigation. <laughs> Hayes, I do want, want you to know, though, that while you were down there at a and I was up the road a piece over there, you know, at the capstone of all learning and all my stuff, uh, trying to get an education. And, you know, some people graduate summa cum laude, some graduate magna cum laude, some graduate cum laude, but I've got to admit, Hayes, that I graduated thank you laude. <laughs> and and ju just ease by, just ease by. I tell you, it has been so fine being here with all of you. It's just, it's just great. I, let, we want to do this again in another 50 years. You know, <laughs> there, there has been word up here tonight that we should start planning Raleigh for, for another one, and we think it shouldn't be more than five. <laughs> <laughs> now wait, if you don't want to, I'll just make it back. <laughs> She really didn't tell me outright. She just kind of alluded to it. You know, just, just a little bit. No, no. But really, you, more than anybody else, because I heard from you two or three times, and it was wonderful. And so we, I say we, I didn't have a thing in the world to do with this. Whoever did this is Bernie Joe. No, I'll bet it was Dot. It was who? Dark Dot. You think it was Dark? Dot, yeah. Yeah, Dot? Okay. It was dark. All right. Y'all gonna give Dot the whole? I think so. Well, really, it was we Dot. All agree. It, it was Dot and me, really. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of. 
Well, the who is the one getting there? It's very low, and, and it doesn't nearly nor adequately say what everybody feels. But I'll guarantee you, I don't, this is so delicate, I don't even want to touch it. I think maybe one of you girls didn't come over here and do this. Isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> that working at the refinery? That's right. <laughs> that, that's the Texaco refinery? No, that's the Cosden oh, refinery. The Cosden refinery. <laughs> well, that, <whoa. laughs> See all the good things that you're getting out of that? What? Well, I certainly
hold it. <laughs> I, uh, I was 15, but I got six. Haynes, we thought you were a baby then. <laughs> around and I really did ask around to everyone and we wanted to give a special award to the lady who has managed to be just nearly the way she was when she was in high school and after asking a lot of people we came up with Bernard Joe Stevens <laughs> We had to give a award to the gentleman who was in the same category, who was the most unchanged after 50 years, and this was really difficult because it seemed that everybody had a different idea, and there were so many handsome men around. So anyway, we finally came up with Edwin Harris. Yay! The only thing is we got the wrong award. <laughs> Just go comb it. <laughs> Two really special men, and it's not really an award. It's what we call the Spouse Award because we had two men who really worked hard. Now, I know there were other husbands here and other wives of our classmates who worked hard, but these two men really deserve some extra special attention, and one is David Barlow, who really worked hard. And the other one is Ken Sherwood, who did a lot of typing and a lot of work.